first what I do is I'll create a new document and when I create documents I like to work with documents that have a square type of dimensions of the artboard I'll be working with but in this case I like going to the web layout and then from there what I'll do is I'll specify in the width and height I'll go to a thousand and then I can go to thousand by a thousand pixels and I go ahead and create and it's created a square document for me as far as the layout is concerned I'm working in the essentials layout and as far as the windows we're going to work with one specifically is going to be the pathfinder so I want to make that one available and drag it up here to the top and then also at the same time what I want to work with is going to be the layers so I'm going to go to window layers and I'm going to grab that as well and as far as those pieces those are the two I'm going to place over here on the artboard there and there's a few other properties that we'd like to work with as well and I'm going to keep the properties window over here to the side and we'll reference those as we're working through this document now if we look over here down at the bottom obviously there is the fill and there's the stroke so as far as for the disc here I'm gonna double click in the fill and I want to have this fill more of like a reddish tone I go into color swatches because I like to define my tones a little bit better that I'm working with and I'll click OK I create a square and as I hold shift you can see that this line appears and this diagonal line is showing that this is a complete square meaning that it's equal on all sides and also what I like is when I drag these options along you'll see that the pop-up will show to let me know exactly what size this will be and this is very important as you're creating documents I'm gonna click outside of here to deselect and I'm gonna create another square and this square I'm gonna create is gonna be a little bit smaller and I'm gonna use this in order to knock out the shape that I have here on the side so with this shape I'm gonna turn it sideways and I'm looking at it and I'm gonna actually make this black and this allows me to decide what part I'm going to cut out of my shape so with regard to this shape that I have here I know that the original shape is still here this is over top of it if I look at the layers it lets me know that I have a couple of objects here the first rectangle that I created here and then a the second rectangle so being the fact that the black rectangle is on top I can select both of these and I'm going to go back over here to this Pathfinder that we just mentioned a while ago. And there are different ways in how the shapes can interact with one another. But what I'm working with is minus front. And minus front means it's going to take this black rectangle here and it's going to use it to subtract from what's below. And by doing that, you can see now that I have something that looks a little bit more of like what I want to have for my disk icon. I'm going to click on the rectangle tool once again and instead of double clicking what I can do is I can click right above here and it has default fill and stroke you can see the shortcut is D so I can press D and it really will default to the black and white that we have here I know that the normal icon of a disk will allow me to one I'm gonna cut out just a couple of pieces there one I'm gonna do that with the first shape here using this to cut out that portion and now the next step what I'll do is I'm gonna go back to the back to the rectangle tool and I'm going to add the portion here on the bottom and this is where the label would go and as I'm creating my shape I'm going to hold the space bar and I haven't let go of my mouse yet and allows me to kind of specify where I want that top left corner to be and then I'll drag the rest of it out here and I'm going to do the same thing here at the top as well I'm going to create a smaller one here at the top and do the same type of thing and by doing that now I have both of the shapes and what I'm going to do is I'll select the first one, I'm going to hold shift, and I'm going to select the second here, and have both of these selected. And being the fact that I have these both selected, then I'll double click here, and it allows me to specify what color I want to work with. And from there, another way you can do, obviously, you can drag and you can create a specific color as to what you want to have. And right here, I want to have this little bit of an off-white, slightly gray here, and that works for me. So I have these two portions here, I have my top and my bottom, and what I want to do is that same idea, I'm going to create one more square here just so I can have the knockout pattern here going to my shape mode and minus front and then as far as the bottom is concerned I have a few options on how I can do this so over here the rectangle tool you can move down to the line segment tool and you can see that the backslash key is the shortcut I'm going to use this to create a line I'm going to create a stroke here and I'm going to drag and I'm going to create one of them here now I'll zoom into the stroke just going to show a couple of things here one as far as working with this over here in my properties I can see that my stroke has a value of one point now there are predefined point values or I can click the up and down arrow to increase or decrease the size okay but as far as the duplication of it I want to have multiple lines like this so that it actually will appear as 
down here different lines which in the traditional floppy disk you would write down the name of the files that are inside of it or the category or whatever have you. So I want to have about five or six of these. Now by default what would happen is if I wanted to select I select the first one and then from there I can hold the option key and I can drag. And I'm going to drag and what I'm doing is I'm paying attention to this pink line which is showing that it's equally spaced. I'm also paying attention to the number of pixels in between. And about 30 pixels is going to be fine for what I'm doing here. Now what I've done is I've duplicated this at 30 pixels. So now if I were to select this here and I want to duplicate it again, what I can do there is I can hold the duplicate shortcut which is Command D. And every time I press Command D it's going to create a new one below with the same distance of those pixels that I specified the first time. Now that I have all of these I will select all of these using my selection tool and now as far as the relationship between these this over here you have the align option and the align option allows you to make sure they're aligned horizontally you can also make sure as far as the spacing and all those different things are adjusted the way that's necessary but in this case we already did it the right way there but if you decided that you wanted to have more of the information you can click on the ellipse down here and it gives more information and I can distribute the objects making sure that they're equal distance vertically from one another and other options for spacing. But we'll get into that in some of the future tutorials here in this series. I'm going to zoom back out and with these objects here I want to group them. So I'm going to go to object and I'll select group. And that means that now once I click on one of the objects it's going to allow me to move all of them as if they were one single group. And I'm going to place these down here on my disk and then I have my disk icon. And for the outside of the disk I can use the stroke as well where I can kind of define more of the stroke here. I can pick a predefined. Maybe I decide I want to have it about five points. And I can double click on here as well. Same type of thing. As I was able to double click over here, I can click over here in the properties. And when I click on it, then it shows a different layout of some of the colors. And I can also add colors and add swatches and things of that nature. But in this case, I'm just looking to add the black border to it. And maybe I'll bring it down just a little bit. Three, two and then from there I have my icon and the next thing I'll need to do is after I decide I want to save it I'll save this icon I'm just gonna call it this icon red and that's saving it as the illustrator file Now, after I save the illustrator file this isn't the file that I'll be able to upload in this format so what I need to do is I need to make an additional modification to it so that the format in which I save will be a format that can be utilized and viewed for the web. So I go to File and I want to Export, Export As. Now when I Export As, it gives me a few options on how I can save this. A PNG is the default that's here, but I also can save it as a JPEG, TIFF, a few of the common formats that would be used for sending something in an email or sending it to the web. So I have disk icon red. I'm going to save it as a PNG. When I click export, there'll be another screen that pops up. And this screen that pops up is just letting me specify as far as the resolution of the document. Um, and at the same time, as far as the preview, how it's going to look. As far as the background, is it going to look transparent or is it going to have a black background or a white background? I'll keep it a transparent for here. Click OK. And then I have my document that's saved as a Illustrator document and also saved as a PNG. So again, this is creating simple icon using the tools here inside of Adobe Illustrator. Hopefully this has been helpful to you and wishing you the best as you continue in creating these documents. Looking forward to connecting with you on the next tutorial. Hi everyone. Thanks for watching. Click the link in the description below to explore more free online professional development on the Adobe Education Exchange and click the link on screen to subscribe to the channel for more videos.